Last time on What's the Difference, the Shaman King edition, we got to see how different interpretations of Boris, the so and so called vampire, could change the atmosphere of an encounter. Whereas in the original version and the new anime, one, you had Boris be a threatening figure in the shadows, using the legend of the vampire to prey upon Yo and his friends. In another, he just encounters Yo and his friends and goes after them, and he just lets his strength speak for itself. The downside ultimately ended up being that in the original anime, Ryu didn't really get his moment to shine and take down Boris with the finishing blow. But in the manga and new anime, he got to show off his ultimate move. Here, we get to see a little bit of what Ryu had to do in order to train. The difference here is that in the original anime, we actually saw that much earlier in episode 29, while the point where they finish off Boris is episode 36. So well over five episodes of difference to get what should have been Ryu's definitive fight and what was Ryu's backstory in training at the Asakura household. So in terms of the manga, we'll be picking up with volume 12, chapter 101, Blazing Tenacity. The 2001 anime episode 29, Super Guts, and the 2021 anime episode 17, Guns of the Angels. Cause angels will pop a cap in your ass. Just remember that. So with the manga and the newer anime, we pick up at the end of the fight as Ryu summons a new power, gives a great monologue, and shows off his ability. Looking pretty badass. And that's when you get the flashback. Meanwhile, in the older series, we actually flash back to when Yo first came out of that cave. In order to give you at least a little bit of context as to when Ryu's training took place, but I mean, that kind of treats you like you're stupid. You should know when Ryu's training took place, but enough time has passed that you might not know. Although I do like that Mikihisa really recruited Ryu into it. Meanwhile, with the manga and the newer anime, we actually see the moment that Ryu tried to get Yomei to train him. I <laughs> love it. I love Ryu trying to get him. And Yomei absolutely rejects him. <laughs> I love it. Yomei is such a stubborn guy. But he really does call Ryu's convictions into question. Because he's trying to go in for girls. I am I hate that they cut out Yomei's comment that he knew because he's a guy. <laughs> he's just like... He used to mess with girls in order to get dates and stuff. So it, it makes Yome seem a little less serious. Like, not that he has a stick up his butt. Although Yome comes off as a little bit more sympathetic to Ryu's plight in the manga. In the original anime, you got Mikihisa actually really going to bat for Ryu. But in both versions, Yome actually apologizes to Ryu, at least in his mind. Meanwhile, the parents of Tokigero has two different versions of context. Whereas in the older anime, it was more that Ryu just kind of had Tokigero tagging along with him from the beginning. But in the manga and the newer anime, Tokigero wanted to kind of pay Ryu back to some capacity, and that's why he was tagging along. It's unfortunate because you don't get Tokigero's comment about, I don't have any place to belong, I don't have a grudge anymore, you know, everything that happened all those years ago seemed to have just washed away from my body because of what Yo did. And it really shows the impact that Yo had on him, and the significance of it all. Like, Tokigero's guilt and and his feelings, he feels like he's going soft. But that same connection is still there. That Ryu 
relates to Tokigero, that feeling of not knowing where you belong or wanting to just make some friends or connect with someone. It's a nice sentiment. I also love Ryu's insight of how, you know, it's our differences that can either make us friends or enemies. But there are no real enemies in this world. It's just like when you look past being enemies with someone, you have to kind of face what it is about you that causes you to not see eye to eye with people. It's very nice. The connection between Tokugero and Ryu is actually really sweet. And despite what Tokugero did to him, Ryu has developed this connection with him because he sees himself in Tokugero. And that, that's one of the many reasons why I love Ryu. He just has a good heart deep down. Ryu is a sweet guy, ultimate. Meanwhile, in the older anime, you have Yo and the gang in this blizzard trying to get to the shaman fight, and this backstory actually comes about because Ryu is trying to relate to Lyserg in some way. It's a nice little moment. I love it. And the discussion between Mikahisa and Yome. Mikahisa never taking off his mask for some reason. And him trying to go to bat for Ryu. It's all very sweet. At least with the older anime, it also shows that Mikihisa is thinking of Yo should have more friends, more allies to help him experience life. And Ryu just wakes up deep in the mountains. <laughs> And I love that in both versions, you know, Yome wants to, he's trying to train Ryu to some degree and tells him he will travel to the summit of the mountain and only then will he actually be trained. And he actually gives the legend of the Yamato no Orochi earlier on rather than later when Ryu actually reaches the summit of the mountain. I actually prefer the story being after Ryu gets to the top because Ryu, after such a long journey, is more open to listening to Mikihisa. But, you know, they want to build the atmosphere beforehand and not have the revelation be later. It really does show the difference in tone that they try to build up. I also love how Yomei makes such a mean comment towards Tokagero. It's interesting. I also hate that they didn't include in the old anime the moment where you actually see Yomei riding on Ryu's bike. It's fun. Blazing tenacity of Ryu. And in all versions, Mikihisa's like, Dude, why? Why are you doing this? And then the tale of the Yamato no Orochi from Mikihisa is like, Well, if he then he wasn't meant to become a shaman, which is pretty cold. I love the music in the older series, with Ryu desperately trying his hardest. Ryu trying his best. And Ryu, he, he, he has a lot of belief, he has a lot of faith in what he's doing. Also, Ryu with his hair down is a tolbe. But I do like in the older anime where Mikihisa is really spurring Ryu forward. This was actually a good time for the older anime to actually include more moments of Tokigero and Ryu talking. And this is where you truly have the discussion between Tokigero and Ryu about how he feels and all that. And then they encounter all of these weird ass ghosts. I do like that in the old version, Ryu actually tries to fight back, which is weird. It's just like they're ghosts, dude. In the older anime, they decide to make a whole on river spirit Ryu's major opponent, where he completely is about to get flooded out. And it's a way to have a bit of an action scene, if nothing else. Although it is weird how he develops a brand new sword and he reaches the summit and it's beautiful. And that's in the manga and the newer anime where he hears about the Yamato no Orochi. I really do love the tale because it shows the tenacity of Ryu. That's why this is such an important moment for Ryu. The strength that he has to never give up. The significance of the sword and what it symbolizes. And then we get into chapter 103, Guns of the Angels and we head back to the 2001 series episode 36 Angel's Pistol where Boris has been completely defeated and he slams right into the wall although they do cut out Boris's inner monologue about losing which I thought was a nice 
a good self-reflective thing to have. It's unfortunately that they cut it out. Well, I miss that Ryu weeps for Boris and the struggle he went through, at least in the uh, original series, at least in the manga and the newer series, but nothing from him in the old series. And although there is one thing that I really do have to credit the older series for, whereas in the manga and the newer series, Bilomero completely leaves. He, he's gone. The moment he was able to peace out, he does. Interestingly enough, in the older series, there's a great moment where Bilomero actually tries to protect Boris. And Boris defense you know tells him to go and blomero's like no it shows that there's something deeper here you know, they thought the legend of dracula was true that if he annihilated dracula he'd be a hero but they were just normal people they didn't turn to dust they weren't monsters they didn't have fangs they were weak as all hell and it's just like we murdered people we murdered normal human people and it weighed heavily on blomero and then the day came where he finally found Boris, and he was already with Hal. It's an interesting direction where Blomero actually willingly became his spirit. You know, in one version, it's just that he ultimately ended up being tortured by Boris's family because he was a vampire hunter, because he tried to hunt them down. So they retaliate. It makes a bit of sense, and it makes Boris seem a little less sympathetic. But at the same time, Boris was hunting them, despite the fact that they weren't actual vampires. So, it's a little bit of cause and effect. But to have it whereas Blomero willingly became his spirit after he had done something terrible to him and his family? It gains a little bit more sympathy on both sides, to a certain degree. It's... it's... Not so cut and dry, and Boris tries to leave, and, and Yo is actually a little bit more sympathetic to the situation. Which is very different from the situation where, you know, Lyserg, Ren, Howe, they're all kind of talking about how messed up this is. But Yo, instead, goes to try to help Boris, at least to some certain degree. Like, even though he's Howe's minion, he doesn't want Boris to just stay up there and die. You know, they're not murderers. They're not terrible people. It's a sweet gesture. But then, in all versions, it happens. Whereas, at least in this version, the older version, he's you actually see the X-Laws teaming up on Boris. And Yo already has a bit of a bad feeling about the X-Laws because of what they did to that one filler character. And thus he tries to stand up for Boris. And Lyserk tries to say that they're right, but Yo just doesn't like it, like the way they do things. And he sex what happens to Asher, but having someone just killed right in front of him, after listening to both Boris and Blomero's stories, he's willing to actually stand up for Boris. Meanwhile, in the original series, in the original manga and the newer anime, it's like, bam, just instantly, he struck down. It's really messed up. Very much like in the uh, older anime with Ashira, where it's just like, they just do it out of nowhere. They just kill him. And that's the first real ex introduction of the X-Laws. And he utterly annihilates Flomero. Turns him into, I mean, Boris. Turns them into dust, and they feel so righteous about it. And they introduce themselves as shaman fight contestants, and speaking that they fight for holy justice to slay the evil How. And Lyser gets an immediate hard on. Came here to investigate How, and then we enter into chapter 104, Smiling Judgment. And they cut. They try to give a little bit of a spiel, a sales pitch to get them to join them because. Because it's just like, we know you're actually trying to face down how as well. You should join us. Join our justice. And they travel it a little bit with the X-Laws to find out what they're about. We're introduced to all of them. With all interesting names. Except for Kevin. Fucking Kevin. And they make themselves seem like they're justice filled and all that. But it's really that they just want revenge. Revenge for what Howe did to them. That's why Lyserg has such a connection. But I love it too because this is one of the few times that Yo particularly does not care for someone. I mean, he, he can tend to like warm up to them a little bit as you go. Yeah, he'll get pissed off at them in the moment. But this one, he's bitter about it. 
he is bitter about the ex love and Lyser he twists the knife and you get where Lyser is coming from I actually enjoy that Lyser is so nonchalant and pleased about them killing a man like this because he was evil he was a murderer and he was executed it makes sense but at the same time murder is murder no matter who does it it's it's an interesting duality in their points of view. and Basson is actually interested in their ghosts it's just like something is weird about them and they're trying to figure out what kind of spirits they have i actually love that ren in the manga actually sees a little bit of an appeal to the x laws at least to a certain degree it's actually pretty fascinating and then in comes the followers of how who are just like ah they overwhelmed the boris that's what happened you actually see more of his face in the manga although i love the mysterious nature of him in the newer anime <laughs> and then here comes the big guy, and then Marco gives the rundown on who Billy is, and then all of the X laws are ready to just murder. It's like, kill him, gank that bitch. And then in come all of the X laws angels and utterly decimate Billy. See how they run like pigs from a gun. Gabriel, Raphael. Uriel, Metrosro, Therian, Ramiel. I actually like that in the manga they show who owns which angel. Just showing off the angels all together is just like, okay, that that doesn't tell me who has which angel though. So points to the manga for clearing that up. And Lyserg is really drinking the Kool-Aid. And Marco is ready to end Billy. And Yo, he's ready to defend him. And then we get to chapter 105, The Wrath of Angel. And Yo is determined to stop him. And Marco doesn't understand and questions if... Yo is on Hao's side, and then Yo gives his reasoning, and Marco's just like, you can't be a neutral party, not in a fight like this. And I do actually kind of enjoy that in the older anime, Life Surrogate is like, yes, that's right, they think just like I do, but it feels too obvious. I like the more subtle implications of how life surrogates just like, like really into them. It's just like, don't you think they're cool? Aren't they kind of awesome? Isn't their power magnificent? Aren't they something else? And then he feels, how he feels about Yo becoming Shaman King. He's like, no, never. And I love in the original anime where Boris is actually trying to waddle away from the situation. And whereas Yo's friends are like, what should we do? Should we get involved? And how everyone kind of picks their sides, how they feel about the situation. Instead of Boris running, it's these two who are ready to escape. Because it's just like, yeah, the x laws power is no joke. We need to get out of here. Let's abandon Billy and run. And then Yo's claim that if you kill people in your way, you're no different than how. And Marco freaks. And I like that at least... Yo's friends try to help him out in the older anime. And it's interesting where Boris actually tries to step in and save Yo. That shows that there was something worth saving in Boris. And it goes very differently in each version. Whereas in the older anime, he sees it as Boris was protecting a servant of Hal. And Yoz feels that it was because Boris wasn't good or evil. Whereas in the manga and the newer anime, it's like... He respects that Yo actually at least tried to challenge him, but in all versions, he's just like, it's interesting because in the manga and newer version, they're like, the Patch Village is near. If you want to live, turn back. Your neutrality will be what causes you, brings you to ruin, basically. Whereas in the older anime, it's just like, if you want to stop people of, like us, then you should probably gain more power. <laughs> I mean, both feel like they're kind of true to a certain degree yo being neutral doesn't feel like he has enough conviction at least that's how you would see a shonen protagonist and he's trying to entice yo to their side saying if you come with us you'll have the power you need and lyser decides to go with them which is interesting because in the manga and newer anime well we haven't gotten there yet but lyser he kind of does it on the sly you know, the, everyone else doesn't find out till later on. And you have Millie trying to stop them because they tried to help out Yo and their friends, but they were treated like trash who tried to get in their way. 
is really messed up. And how cold Lyserg is to all of them, despite the fact that they tried to help them out. It's just like, I want power, and I need stronger allies in order to defeat Hal. And he feels that Yo's kindness will ultimately be what brings him to ruin. In a situation where Lyserg is like, I can't believe in you anymore. It's just like, fuck you, Lyserg. Fuck you. I'm sorry, I just really can't care for Lyserg in the older series, in the older anime. He's too much of an ass. Whereas in the manga and newer anime, it's just like, yo, it's just like, ah, uh, Harusame broke. W what do I do now? It's just like, what do I do now? But I do like that yo kind of just brushes the situation off. Like, at least no one got hurt. The sword can be repaired, if nothing else. And the older anime actually ends with Lumera ultimately leaving to go to hell to see Boris, which is kind of messed up. It's just like, and he literally just goes downward. It's messed up. But it's a bitter ending because of Lyser just leaving. But in all versions, Yo is just ready to move on. It's just like Lyser made his choice. That's the end of it. Now, whereas in the manga and newer anime, you actually have Anna, Manta all arrive at Massa Verde in order to search for Yo. And they're searching. You know, because Mikihisa had scoped the place out, and this is the place where they should be able to find the Patch Village. Meanwhile, in the older anime, they had actually been in America for some time. <laughs> a little bit of slapstick here and there. And in all versions, they end up encountering, of all people, how. So we'll just have to see what happens next as Anna manages to encounter how, and Yo sees if he can get further towards the Patch Village, despite the fact that Harasame has been shattered. Ultimately, in all versions, you know, Ryu really struggled in order to get more power, but, you know, the older anime really doesn't treat his power like it's anything significant. But in all versions, Yo's relationship with the X-Laws is not a positive one. You know, he tries to save people from the X-Laws despite what they've done in the past, which is noble, but it does raise the question, is Yo trying to save those who are murderers and would-be murderers, is that a positive thing or is it a negative thing? Just have to keep watching to find out. But tell me your thoughts on these various different versions. Which do you think did it better? Which showed off Yo's conviction to not killing better? I mean, at least in the older anime, Yo tried to protect Boris after he knew his backstory and felt he should be protected. But when the manga and newer anime Anime, Yo just values life. That's it. He values human life no matter who it may be. So it raises the question, would you protect even a murderer? Is even a murderer worthy of being protected? Now, let me know in the comments section below and let me know if you like this video. Like, comment, subscribe, bell, all that good YouTube stuff and I will see you in the next What's the Difference. Bye bye. <laughs>